Good evening, everyone. This is Angel Torres welcoming all of you and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Uh, you did it on a very, very special day because we have, today we have uh, Scott Palmer. Uh, he's a master coordinator, second generation, and he has a lot to share with all of us. And uh, I'm anxious to listen to the entire story because I have heard bits and pieces here and there. And, uh, and you know, when I sent the invitation, many people immediately ask, uh, are you gonna record? Because uh, I want my son to listen to this. I want this person or that person. So Scott, everybody's waiting for you. So why don't we, uh, well, welcome first of all, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation. No, thank you for uh, inviting me. It's an honor to be here. Okay, well, first question is, let us know who are you? I mean, um, your family, kids, et cetera, where are you from? And because uh, I didn't want to mention all that, I want you to do it and uh, just share a little bit about you, what kind of work you you did before Shackley and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Scott Palmer. I'm uh, the son of Les and Allie Palmer, Lifetime Master Coordinators from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I grew up in uh, the Minneapolis Mafia with Shackley. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, an affectionate term we uh, used to call the group up there. Uh, this was back in the early 70s. So 50 years ago, this year, uh, Les and Allie Palmer started their Shackley business. And um, it was a time when uh, a young mother had three young children and who were sick and missing school. And uh, she was a nurse. She would leave at 5 a.m. every day to drive into the inner city to uh, do her nursing job. And um, the father, um, my dad, was uh, a struggling young entrepreneur. He was a barber by training, owned some uh, hair salons in Minneapolis and St. Paul and a billiards hall, but really wasn't, um, he hadn't found his passion, so to speak. So uh, when uh, my aunt Edith introduced Allie Palmer, my mom to Shackley, um, she thought that this would be a good chance for her to help um, her, her young children who were sick and missing school. So uh, the, uh, the family started getting healthy. We started thriving in sports and we were not missing school anymore. We, uh, we were getting good grades and uh, fast forward a couple of years. And uh, when, when lightning really struck was when uh, my dad became enthused in the business, and uh, he saw the sales plan. He saw the the entrepreneurial uh, benefits of network marketing and how the sky is the limit. There's there's no ceiling. You could build it as big as you wanted to, and uh, he saw this as uh, a real business opportunity. Where my mom was more interested in the health aspects of the the products, and so. Uh, one thing led to another, they started to gain some momentum and they were introduced to Bob Hoker, who is uh, a master coordinator and a very dynamic leader back in Minneapolis. And on every Tuesday night, they would have a meeting at the Ambassador Hotel in St. Louis Park. And this was a very inspirational meeting where uh, speakers such as Al Hegerman and the, Joyce and Chuck Hoffman, and uh, several of the Minneapolis leaders, the Sutter Homes and the Burks, and you know the list goes on and on and on. Um, several very dynamic master coordinator teams would come into this hotel and bring all their people. And so it was a very inspiring uh, team that would get together every Tuesday night. And then after the meeting, they'd go across the parking lot to the Lincoln Dell and have dessert and coffee and, and, and talk into the wee hours of the morning about all their dreams and aspirations. And so uh, this really led to them starting to grow their business because in those conversations, my parents learned from Bob Hoker that if you really want to impact the business in a big way, don't just do one-on-ones, do meetings. And that quickly transcended into our own family home uh, being um, transitioned into a meeting uh, hall for our, our, our Shackley meetings started in our basement. And I remember uh, on hell, our first Shackley trip 
was to San Juan, Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, really? And nice. As a, as a young Minnesota kid, I had never been on a plane. I had never seen the ocean. Uh, I was probably nine or 10 years old. This was in the early to mid 70s. And uh, it was at the Carib Hilton uh, in San Juan. And, and uh, boy, when, when I saw that, I became my parents' best sales manager because I wanted them to hit hit the coordinator requirements every year so I could go to the next year's convention. And so my parents used to laugh because I would always ask them, okay, where do we stand in qualifying for next year's convention? Because I want to see all my friends again. And uh, I see Molly Pratt on this call and uh, her son Rip was one of my good friends that I get to see every year. So uh, there's uh, there, there's more to this story, but that's that's the start of the story, how our family got into the business. And um, can you tell us a little bit about your professional life and, uh, of course, about your own family? That, that was really good. I mean, I, 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 I like to say that uh, all I heard was legacy. And, and you were really, I mean, you talk a lot about legacy. We're not building only for today. We're building for many, many more years in the future. And that's something that is attracting, even today, lots of people. I have new people in my organization that they are being attracted by the legacy, that this is for the long time. And you are proof of it. Your family is proof of it. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, professionally, where you come from, what, what kind of work you Yeah, do. so um, one, of, one of the real benefits of uh, being in a Shackley family is you learn entrepreneurial skills from your parents and all the dynamic leaders in the organization. And uh, this is very unique. And so when I got out of college and I got my first job, uh, I moved through the ranks and I moved around the country several times. I ended up in New York City as a 25 year old uh, calling on the largest account uh, as a sales executive for a food company. And um, in, in that role, I was, uh, I, I was, um, I had the role of, of calling on the biggest uh, food account in the country for this, this food company, the biggest grocery chain. And uh, I, I used many of the skills that I learned growing up in a Shackley business. And so um, I saw an ad in the newspaper one day in New York and I, I, I answered the ad. It was for uh, a medical device sales job with Johnson & Johnson. And I had a college classmate that worked for them and was selling surgical staplers. And so I called her, I talked to her and I heard they were, they were making good money. So I answered the ad, I got the job and uh, I started working for Johnson Johnson in New York City. And I went to sales training and <laughs> the first thing they did, human resources came in and said, whatever you do, don't date anybody within the company. So what did I do? I started dating my sales trainer who is now my wife. And now we have two kids. <laughs> and that's what happens when you don't follow directions. Uh, but I was blazing my own trail. So uh, one thing led to another. I moved to Boston where her family was from and we've been there ever since. And so in my uh, 30 year medical device career, um, most of that time was spent in downtown Boston working with spine surgeons. I sold spine medical devices. And uh, I started out as a sales guy and I worked my way up to a business distributor owner of uh, a sales team. I had a team of 10 salespeople, a business manager, a sales manager, and, uh, and we were thriving. We had a very uh, dynamic growth business in spine surgery sales. And if anybody here has had orthopedic conditions or spine conditions, either in the neck or in the low back, um, you probably... Um, experienced one of my devices put in because we, uh, we were a, a, a very large uh, and fast growing spine device company. And um, in that time, I worked with all the surgeons in, in, in Boston and uh, I probably saw maybe 3000 spine surgeries in those 30 years. And so uh, uh, as luck would have it, our management team changed one year. And uh, this was right on the heels of us having our best year ever. And when the management team changed, uh, and this is not unusual in corporate America, I'm sure many of you have experienced this or know somebody who's experienced it. Uh, they made a decision. The new team came in and said, we're gonna cut out all these uh, expensive, highly paid in, uh, independent distributors and go to a, a direct sales channel. And uh, lo and behold, as uh, a guy that was still fairly young in my early fifties, I was, um, shown the door and uh, they went in a different direction. And so 
uh, corporate America, um, with all the pressures they're under to hit their quarterly numbers on Wall Street, uh, they can make these decisions on a moment's notice. And, and you know, one day you're at the, at the top of the mountain and the next day you're being thrown uh, to the bottom. And uh, fortunately for me, I had a contract. They had to buy me out and I got a very uh, healthy buyout, which uh, was very fortunate. Several of my colleagues who worked directly for the company as an employee got no buyout. They were just shown the door with no severance whatsoever. And so that's when I made the transition to Shackley. That's when I sat down with my dad and talked about his business. And uh, I was surprised to hear when I asked him how Shackley was going, he said, it's going better than ever. Um, the business is still chugging along, it's going great. And uh, at that point he was in his early eighties and um, his, his health was starting to fail. And so we started talking about um, possibilities and you know how, how the how the business would look uh, in a transition stage to the next generation, and so I met with Marjorie Fine. We talked about uh, the fair uh, asset value of a Shackley business as as she computes it, and so to make it fair for my brother and sister, I bought the business, and that was uh, two years ago, and um, it's the best decision that that I ever made. And <laughs> I remember uh, the la the last thing I'll say on that is. The day that I met with these uh, sales executives at my medical device company, and they gave me my termination, I called my wife, Lily, who's a uh, <clears throat> very passionate uh, first generation Cuban American, and, and she's not afraid to give you her opinion. <laughs> so I said, Lily, we've just been given the best opportunity of our lifetime. And she's like, really, what happened? I said, I was terminated. She's like, how can that be the best opportunity? <laughs> so, <laughs> We uh, we we had a good chuckle about that, and uh, and it it ended up being the best opportunity because you know now uh, I can uh, throw my uh, energies into Shackley and uh, build our legacy business to to new heights. Wow, that that is a great story, and the way that you guys handle, uh, you know the 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 way that you guys decided to. Um, work the business out, uh, that, that is a spectacular because uh, I have heard of many others that uh, they split the business uh, on equal portions to the different kids. And then the problem is that when that happens, nobody owns it. So nobody really put their heart on, on the business. Well, uh, I, maybe a couple of people have done it, but uh, what you guys did is perfect. And uh, I was going to ask you. I, I've heard in the past that you used to you used to participate in meetings when you were a kid. I want you to share something about it, but then continue on to share uh, what. How do you see the business now? I mean, you were when you were a kid. You saw the business and the way it was going. Where do you see it now? Yeah. So um, when uh, when Bob Hoker had those weekly meetings at the ambassador hotel and he was doing all that pv and my, my father would ask him you know how do you do all that pv twenty five thousand a month and he said well you can either do one-on-ones and grow slowly or you can have big meetings and grow rapidly which do you want and so my dad said oh that's an easy decision so we started having these weekly meetings in our home and started growing faster and faster and for some reason he and my mom asked me to get up and give some talks at these meetings. Uh, at this point, I was probably getting into high school and uh, I was a high school athlete and several of our friends were starting to take Shackley um, for, for their sports too. And so the sports nutrition was a big part of it. And so uh, a lot of people in our organization had kids, our kid, my age. And so, um, so I gave a lot of presentations at these meetings uh, from a kid's perspective. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of fun. Um, and, you know, I, I think people kind of enjoyed it. It was a little um, uh, variety, so to speak, uh, for a meeting. But then transitioning to now, the present, where I see the Shackley business. So uh, what resonates with me, a couple of things resonate with me. Number one, the four-year career book from Roger or Richard Brook. Um, the rule of 200. So you take your monthly income, multiply it by 200. That's the value of, a, of your asset, of your Shackley business. 
that really resonated with me as a business person. Number two, um, Roger Barnett's mantra of turning sick care into well care really resonates with me. Uh, I was on the front lines of healthcare. Uh, I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. I saw, uh, and and I'll I'll paraphrase this by saying I respect and admire physicians and nurses, healthcare professionals. Um, to the end. Um, the, these are incredible people and, uh, and brilliant people, and I, I so admire and respect them. However, there is the, the ugly side of medicine, over prescription of drugs, over surgery. Uh, when you're incentivized to do more surgery and you, you have somebody that's on the border, their borderline, you could do conservative therapy or surgery, but you're incentivized to do more surgery. It's, it's a human bias to do more surgery. That's how you get paid. And so um, I saw that side of healthcare. I'd rather be on this side. I'd rather be doing something good for society, encouraging uh, good behavior, preventative medicine rather than cures. And um, I think uh, that's, a, that's a much greater way to live, in my opinion. The, the, the last thing I'll say is uh, the benefit of Shackley is a lifestyle. You can work from your home now. You can do Zoom calls. You know, we still like to get together in person, but uh, in my role in the medical device business, I was on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. I've spent um, Christmas morning in surgery, my kids' birthdays. You know, every weekend holiday, <laughs> kids even... Everything you can imagine I've missed due to being on call because, you know, trauma surgeries come in the middle of the night on weekends and on holidays. And when they call, you just drop everything and go. You get to the operating room stat like there's there's no questions. There's no conversations. It's see, ya, I'm gone. And it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Wow. I hear you loud and clear. You now you own your life. Yes. Just to say. And uh, the other benefit that you and I have talked about a lot is about uh, the opportunity that we have in Shackley to create an asset where, uh, you know, you, you can, we can say that we make money even when we're sleeping, because when somebody in your organization plays an order at two o'clock in the morning, Shackley pays you for that and you were sleeping. So uh, I know that, you know, we're not necessarily allowed to say things like that, but it's a reality. I mean, we do get paid when we're sleeping. Um, let me ask you uh, just to about to end the, the, the call. Um, what would you suggest? Uh, I have two groups. What would you suggest for a new person that might be listening to you uh, to, to do, you know, what to do in order to create uh, an organization? And the second question, so you can answer both at the same time, is uh, uh, what would you suggest to parents that have big businesses like I do? Uh, what do you suggest to the, uh, to the next generation to do? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll start with your second question and then I'll go backwards and go to the first. So um, I liked what my dad did. He had an estate planning weekend where the three kids all flew home to Minnesota and, and met with my dad. Uh, we all live in different cities around the country. So we spent the weekend talking and it was only uh, direct family, just the, just the immediate family, siblings and my dad. And we had an estate planning weekend where we talked everything out. Um, he, he said, okay, here are where all the assets are. Here's, um, here's my plan you know, let, let's talk it out. Let's, let's have open, honest, frank conversations about it. That was the weekend I approached him about uh, buying the business. I said, you know, I'd like to keep this fair for Mark and Mary, my brother and sister. So uh, I propose uh, I pay for the business and that way it's fair for everybody and there's no hard feelings. And uh, he said, um, well, um, I was actually going to pass it on. You were going to inherit it because I gave Mark a loan for a house and I'm gonna pay Mary an extra uh, amount of money. And so for you, uh, because you have business experience and you're an entrepreneur, I, I was going to just give you the business. And I said, dad, I, I don't want that. I'm actually gonna refuse it and turn it down. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So I said, the only way it works is if I buy it because that way it's black and white and it's clear there are no gray areas. 
So that's what we did. And, um, and thank goodness we did that because um, my brother, and I love my brother to death, uh, but he has uh, his new wife who's brand new to our family, you know, whose first questions were, you know, who's going to get the inheritance? Um, and, and, and by the way, I want the Shackley business. This is her talking. She doesn't know how to spell Shackley. She's never taken a Shackley product, but she wanted to inherit the business. And, um, and when my dad heard that, he realized, okay, you know, this is going to be an important decision, how we, how we handle this. And I said, you know, the value of this asset is too great. It's too rich of a heritage. This legacy is important to us. You know, let's do this the right way. And, and so that, that's how we, we accomplished that. And thank goodness we did that. That avoided a lot of hassles. And it also allowed my brother and I to, you know, keep, keep a good relationship, was, which was important to me. And then uh, moving back to your first question, Angel, uh, can you repeat that? Yes, what would you suggest to someone? Because we have new people on this call that are listening and they want to start building an organization. What would you suggest to that? Yeah, so I, I would uh, reach out to some mentors, uh, talk to successful people, find the best um, successful people you can. That's what I did in medical device sales. I talked to the people who I saw were doing the best and asked them a lot of questions. Uh, I would read the four-year career book. I would read Mach 2. I would read Fr Reflections of a Philosophy by Dr. Shackley. And I'd read Thoughtsmanship. I'd read those four books and I'd get a mindset of how to work this business because it may be uh, unique and different compared to what your current business is. Uh, it certainly was for me. I would also um, sign up for the Solid Start Workshop. I would listen to the KSAO interview with Richard Brook. It's one hour of gold. It's on MC Mentors homepage. Um, that, that's a must watch for anybody onboarding into this business. Because what KSAO has done over in Malaysia and set up this template for success and growth is incredible. And we are all taking advantage of that. My organization is completely motivated and really catching uh, a wave of growth due to the KSAO workshop. And uh, we have a, a meeting this Saturday um, and we have it once a month. And so uh, those would be a few ideas, um, but definitely... Uh, have, a, have a learning mindset because uh, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It only matters what you're going to do in the, in the moment. And you have to really refine your skills getting into the Shackley business because it's unique. It's different. Everybody's independent entrepreneurs. They can work as little or as much as they want. Um, we don't give them um, direct direction like employees because they're, they're free to do what they want. So it's an inspirational business. It's a leadership business, a coaching business, a listening business. <laughs> That's what I learned from Roland. Listen, ask a lot of questions and listen. Well, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I have one more question and then uh, I'm going to make a comment on one of the words that you met, that you mentioned, uh, but I'll let you know what the question is now. Uh, what is your favorite quote and why. But before you answer, you, may, you talk about mindset. And today I was um, coaching two of my leaders. And, uh, and it's funny because both calls turn into talking about mindset. Because, you know, people can get, you know, they, they can learn what's PGB and OV and PB and all of that somewhere. It's written somewhere. But mindset. You know, we, we come to Shackley with a subconscious full 90% of thoughts that somebody else put there. Uh, people that we like, people that not necessarily we, don't, we like, and, uh, and, and sometimes we're doing things and saying things that we don't really mean, but, but, but it's there. So we have to definitely work with our mindset. So talking about mindset, what's your favorite quote and we'll We'll end the call with this. Yeah, anyway. so um, I, I follow Warren Buffett. Um, I, I love investing and I love fin the financial world. And so I follow uh, Warren Buffett pretty closely and his partner, Charlie Munger, who's actually just as interesting, if not more than Buffett. And so th they're both really interesting to follow on social media and, and hear all their quotes. Uh, but um, 
Buffett said, uh, and, and this has been attributed to Einstein too. So I think Albert Einstein said it first and Buffett reiterated it, but it, it, appeal, it applies to the Shackley business in a big way. And Richard Brooke talks about it in his book too. Compound growth is the eighth wonder of the world. And Shackley is all about compound growth. And when you build it, it compounds and that is really powerful. And so uh, as I you know, extend my, my new career for the next 30 years, <laughs> because I don't wanna retire. I tried retiring and I played golf with all the grouchy old guys out of my country club and it was miserable. So I said, I told Lily, I said, I can't be retired. This is, this is terrible. I, I've got too much gas left in the tank. And I, I decided at that time, I'm gonna work for the rest of my life. I'm not, I'm not ever gonna retire because Shackley is too much fun and it's too much energy. And I think it keeps us all young, which I really like. So, so that'd be my favorite quote. And I don't know if anybody watched the NBA finals last night, but um, Giannis uh, Compo, the Greek freak who won the MVP, won the NBA championship. He had a really thoughtful quote, um, and, and I'll just share this with you. I don't know if you heard this, but it's on YouTube. Uh, somebody said, how do you keep your ego in check, you know, now that you're the greatest player in the world? And he said, um, looking behind you is a problem. Look, don't look in the past because that's your ego. Um, and don't look ahead either because that's your pride. Only look in the present because that's where you stay humble and that's where you have humility. And if you do that, you ask yourself every day, what can I do right now to impact our success? Improve ourselves every day, improve our teams, improve our organizations. So live in the here and the now. Uh, that's that's uh, the Greek freaks uh, advice. So I, I thought that really resonated. Scott, thank you so much. I mean, you, you did a super fantastic job as expected. And uh, uh, we deeply appreciate all of us that are on this call. And I'd like to thank you. And I'd like to thank everyone on the call for uh, saying present. And uh, well, I just wish you all, all the best. And uh, I know you, that you're gonna get uh, to senior master and presidential master and uh, you're just getting started. You started two years ago. So <laughs> the sky Thanks, is Angel. the limit, um, my friend. It was an honor. I really appreciate uh, the collaboration we've had together, and uh, I, I love I love everything you're doing with uh, the Spanish Solid Start Workshop. It's so it's so important and so meaningful for all of us. Uh, what uh, what you're doing with that uh, that leadership role, and it's uh, it's very much appreciated. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you everyone for saying present presente. <laughs> Scott, thank you very much and please give my best to your family. Okay, we'll do you too. Thanks everybody. Okay, take care. Bye.